right, so let's prove that this language is not regular, which is the set of all strings over 0, 1 star, such that the number of 0, 0s and 1, 1s in W is the same. So as an example, if we look at the string 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and maybe a 0 at the end, so let's count the zero, zero occurrences. So there's one right there. There's one right there. They can be overlapping possibly. There's a one, one there and a one, one there. And so since there are two occurrences of each, therefore uh, this string is in the language. And if we took off that zero on the end, that doesn't change anything. However, if we took off this one right here, then it's not in the language anymore. If we deleted the first zero, then it's back in the language, okay? Um, so let's prove that this thing is not regular. So as always, we need to suppose that L were regular. Then uh, that means that there exists a pumping constant uh, P for L. I'm just gonna uh, abbreviate it as exists a P. So we need to find a string that is in the language and has length at least p. So it has to have the same number of 0, 0 occurrences as 1, 1 occurrences. And there's a lot of different strings that you can actually pick in this particular case. I'm just going to do a common use, a common one that is kind of similar to the example that we did a little earlier. So I'm going to choose w to be equal to 0 to the p, 1 to the p. And you think, huh? <laughs> There's no zero zeros in there, Ryan. There's no one ones in there. Al contraire. <laughs> so well, let's think about what this string actually is. It's a whole bunch of zeros and then a whole bunch of ones. So let's figure, think about where the, the zero zero occurrences are. It's right there, right there, right there. And it's kind of like the staircase pattern that goes down. And then the one ones occur in the same, in the same way. In fact, there are P minus one occurrences of zero, zero in there. Try to think about why that is. And P minus one occurrences of one, one in there for the same reason. All right, so then now we need to look at all decompositions. Look at all decompositions of w into x, y, and z according to the three rules, such that x, y has length at most p and y has at least one character in it. So since x and y are the beginning of the string and have at most p characters, they must live entirely within the zeros. So I'm going to have x be some number of zeros, let's say alpha of them, y is zero to the beta, some number of zeros. And let's say z is zero to the p minus alpha minus beta, because that's the number of zeros left. And then one to the p at the end. So now we need to choose an i for which the number of zeros, zeros, and one ones is different. And so more precisely, we need to choose an i such that x, y to the i, z is not in L. So it's not in L, okay? Well, what is this? If you actually compute it, it's gonna be this string. It's gonna be zero to the p plus i minus one times beta, and then one to the p. So, uh, so here, because we have the alphas get killed off, we have i beta right here, because that's how many choices of y we have. And then we have a minus one beta from this. So that's where the i minus one comes from. So this thing is in L, if and only if the number of zero zeros is equal to the number of one ones. And we want to show that the numbers are actually different or choose an i for which they are different. So uh, what does that mean? So that means, well, what is the number of zero, zero occurrences here? So the number of zero, zeros is going to be, since this is a contiguous range, it's gonna be one less than that number. So it's gonna be P plus I minus one times beta minus one. That's the number of zero, zero occurrences. And then the number of one, one occurrences is gonna be one less than the 
other range is length, which is going to be p minus 1. So this thing is in L if and only if these two numbers are the same. So I'll go back to red. So this is if and only if p plus i minus 1 times beta minus 1 is equal to p minus 1. Well, we see a p minus 1 on both sides, so let's kill those off. So this is if and only if i minus 1 times beta is equal to 0. And that would imply that either i is equal to 1 or beta is equal to 0. Beta is not 0 uh, by definition, so that's not 0. So let's choose some value of i that's not 1. Let's pick 2. You can pick, by this, you can pick any value of i that you want as long as it's not 1. Okay, so that shows us that we have arrived at a string that is not in the language, and that would contradict the for all statement in the pumping lemma there. So therefore, we have shown that this language is not regular. Try to actually try to generalize this. So if you substituted this with 0, 1 and 1, 0, it turns out that that is regular. If you have done, a, there's a whole bunch of strings, pairs of strings where it is regular and a whole bunch of pairs of strings where it's not regular. And it turns out work that I've done and some other people have done have actually shown when is this regular and when is it not. And try to actually think about, is there some kind of general pattern that you can see? And, and there is, and it's really cool. So we have shown that this language is not regular.